one. Hello everyone, and what the hell is up with coronavirus and bacteria? Can bacteria fight coronavirus? How do the bacteria inside of us keep us healthy? What is a microbiome? Anyway, welcome to Ask Me, I'm a Scientist. I'm Susanna Harris, and I am here to help you ask questions of the experts. Every episode, we bring on a new expert. This week, I am super excited to be inviting Dr. Uh, just, he's so cool. He's so cool. I'm so sorry. I just, I, I'm so excited about this because microbiome stuff is what I'm so excited about. I get to do plant microbiome and Dr. Geraldo Mar Margarinos, I think I got it. Uh, the director of the human microbiome rebalancing program at ICAM in New Jersey is here with us to talk about what the microbiome has to do with this virus and how we can keep staying healthy. Uh, Dr. Margarinos, thank you so much for coming. I uh, would love for you to introduce yourself to our audience. Hi, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, thanks for inviting me. I definitely want to share a little bit about what I've been in field and the implications that it has with this new pandemic uh, that is everyone, of course. Um, I'm a naturopath. Also, um, I was... Uh, trained as a dentist and a periodontist as well. Uh, I don't practice anymore in the dentistry field, but definitely it's a huge asset in everything I'm doing. I've uh, been advocated to the study of the human microbiome for several years and studying and researching in that area. And it's, it's a huge part of everything in, in nowadays for keeping ourselves healthy. I'm, I was able to develop uh, a full, fully working protocol for rebalancing these uh, issues in our gut, mainly in our gut, because the microbiome is every, everywhere, everywhere in our yeah, body. Yeah, I was going to ask, you know, could you real quick define, like, what is a microbiome? I feel like this is just a, such a hot word right now, but, like, what does that mean from an expert perspective? Well, the microbiome is defined as the total population of, of microbes, which includes uh, viruses, bacteria, fungi, and other species that are populating our body internally and externally, in our skin, uh, hair, etc. Um, the, the, the amount of bacteria or microbes in general that live in the, in the human body over, over outnumber our human cells largely. The estimates goes from anywhere from 90, 80 percent to 50 percent. There's, there's some controversy in those numbers. Uh, but we are vastly outnumbered by the numbers of microbes we have in our body compared to the, the amount of human cells we have. And we are com completely connected. And we have a very tight relationship between those microbes on our human yeah, cells. Yeah, I've, I've heard it described as basically another organ, you know, so we have our skin, we have our lungs, um, but we're, it's so, we're so tightly tied to it that the microbiome is just sort of integral to our health the same way that we need to have a, a, healthening, a healthy immune system. Um, and that's something that you talk about in your work. How, how are bacteria and viruses, how are they related to our immune system? Is it, is it always that bacteria and viruses are, are attacking us or, or what's going on there? Yeah, that's, I think, is one of the most uh, important questions. And one of the things we need to understand is that uh, the microbes in general are not here to make us sick. Uh, we evolve uh, together in this world and we definitely have a codependent relationship mm -hmm. and we need them to survive. Actually, we need them more than they need us to survive. Um, so we definitely rely on the functions and the metabolic pathways we are related to the microbiome in order to be healthy and thrive in this world. And the 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 implications with, within the immune system that the microbiome has are, I will say, are the largest in all our bodies. Uh, we, we depend on everything that is related to the immune function relies on the healthy state of the microbiome. 
more than 80% of the immune system is related to a healthy microbiome function. Yeah, and so this is, this is something that I was actually talking with a lab mate just yesterday, um, and she recently took antibiotics. So what I know about the microbiome is that taking antibiotics, this is so helpful when we have a, a disease or an infection where we need to get rid of it. You know, there's certainly good uses of antibiotics, but she was asking me, how would these antibiotics affect her ability to fight off something like a virus? Is it, are they tied together in, in some way? Well, the, definitely antibiotics are not designed for viruses. Yes. That's something that is very important to know. Antibiotics, that's not their use. They, uh, they attack in different ways uh, some structure, cellular levels of, um, of the bacteria, yeah. pretty much that's what they're meant for. Uh, so they target that type of organisms, but they're not uh, useful for any type of viral infection. Hmm. Um, the huge problem with antibiotics right now is that we use them, um, first of all, without properly testing most of the times, so we don't really know, and because most of the antibiotics are broad-spectrum antibiotics, they attack and, they, and, and kill a vast number of different type of microbes. Mm -hmm. So, whether you are you need or not uh, to use antibiotics for any reason, uh, we are going to kill a lot of different bacteria that are not the one who are causing the problem, and they actually might be useful uh, for several things that we need to keep ourselves healthy. Mm -hmm. So we can actually, with the overuse of antibiotics, compromise the immune, immune function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, right. So I, I think uh, a fair number of people know that taking an antibiotic is not going to help you fight off a viral infection. And even though that's really frustrating, um, I think it's something that some of us are, are kind of, I guess, resigned to. Uh, but I do know there's such things as antivirals, right? And, and they can work in a bunch of different ways. I mean, why don't we just, why don't we just wipe out everything? We're talking a lot about washing our hands and, you know, sterilizing things. What if we just sort of, could we just restart? Could we just clean ourselves of all of these different microbes? Uh, why, why, or why not? Um, well, actually that was uh, one of the approaches that we had before um, in the early years. Uh, of medicine, but uh, now we know that the, the the implications of doing that will be pretty much compromising every single metabolic pathway we we rely on in our body. Um, we need those microbes. Mm -hmm. We need them. In the approach, the healthy approach of the the things I'm trying to promote as the main idea when you have uh, any type of issue or any type of pathogen in your body will be that unless you're, of course, heavily compromised and you're, you're in life's risk mm -hmm. situation, that you need to rebalance yourself. Mm -hmm. Not killing everything randomly to try to see if we hit the spot and kill that microbe that is causing a problem mm -hmm. or that whatever it is. We definitely need to keep in the side of, stay on the side of knowing how to balance things. Yeah. And yeah. balancing is not only, only about the microbes that you have, it's about the ecosystem, the, the ecological conditions internally in your body that are allowing those microbes to survive and thrive internally. So, you know, you use the word pathogen, and, and I understand that sort of, you know, a, a bacterium or a virus or, or some microbe that can make you sick. Um, uh, I know you can't see me right now, but I'm actually wearing one of my favorite uh, science microbe shirts, which is it has a, a big tardigrade on it because they're so adorable. Um, you know, obviously not a single cell organism, but still very tiny. You have to look in a microscope. Um, but it, it seems like a lot of times we talk about healthy bacteria and bacteria that make you sick or, or viruses that don't affect you and viruses that do. Uh, my background is really in plant microbiomes, and, and what I understand about that is that some bacteria will keep you healthy or, or keep plants healthy, but if there's a big imbalance, um, all of this can kind of get thrown out of whack. And I wanted to, to go into that thing that you were talking about with the balance and 
you know, if you could explain to me a little bit more about what your job title is of, of this rebalancing project. Well, um, there's a, there's aspects of our, 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 our structures that we can, we can handle in order to make um, our bodies more, more likely to receive or the growth of the bacteria we need to be enhanced in some extent. Um, we definitely get affected and damaged majorly by different type of uh, factors that we're exposed since the moment we were born and even before. Uh, we know that we have the first bacteria inoculated to ourselves in the placenta and then later when we are uh, delivered into this world, if you were born by C-section or natural delivery, there will be a huge difference between the microbes you're inheriting and putting in your body. And and on and on, there are so many events in life that can disrupt this uh, natural colonization of beneficial bacteria that we need to be able to be healthy. And balancing is pretty much creating or normalizing the conditions internally in your body. Mm -hmm. So the bacteria you have will be naturally also balanced in the proportions, amounts, and diversity that is needed in order to be able to perform all these metabolic pathways and metabolic activities we need to be healthy. And probiotics, that I know there's a trending thing around probiotics right now, is, are very, very um, uh, overused. And actually the, the usage of probiotics could be beneficial, but the amount of diversity and, and amount of, of total bacteria you can put in your body using probiotics it's not going to be the main way to rebalance this. It's yeah. more about the environmental conditions. That's it's a great question. It's, it's funny because we actually just got a question from Marty here in the uh, YouTube chat asking, can taking probiotics help fight off viral infections? And I think super related to that, we've got Matthew asking, you know, what are the symptoms of an out of balance microbiome? Uh, I, the first thing that I think of is that whenever I take antibiotics, my stomach is pretty upset for a few days. Are there, you know, what do we see when our microbiome is out of whack and, and how can that affect our uh, kind of ability, I guess, or, or our sensitivity to something like a virus? Um, I mean, we'll try to, this is actually like not a simple thing to explain because there's so many things that we can we can relate to uh, this biotic environment or this balance, this balanced environment in the gut. But um, definitely, we know that one of the main things that is related to this biotic uh, microbiome is the um, is is the immune system. Okay. So we know now that every single chronic condition in the in the body is related to a certain extent to the microbiome. But uh, when we know that the immune system is so tightly related to the microbiome, every, everything from autoimmune uh, to um, for that can that can be called psoriasis or uh, fibromyalgia uh, to any other type of low-grade chronic inflammation condition will be related in, uh, majorly to the microbiome. Mm -hmm. and, but it always starts with gut symptoms. In some point of your life, you get more bloated or constipated. You don't feel well when you're eating some type of foods. You are you feel your bowels or your intestines or your gut system not working a little bit off. And sometimes we even get used to those symptoms so much that we 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 think they're normal for ourselves. Mm -hmm. But definitely, and even periodontal disease and mouth conditions. If you have your gum swollen or bleeding, also is a very good sign of there's something bad in your internal ecosystem in your gut, mm -hmm. because this is all connected. If you think about it, this is a tube that is has two openings, and <laughs> so it is external all the way. This is this is outside, and this is the main receptor of everything that is coming internal internally in our, in our body, and the microbiome is actually checking has a checklist of everything that gets inside and is doing its work, telling our body what's inside, what's getting inside, if it's good for us, if it's not good for us. Mm -hmm. And and that actually makes the whole relationship with our own cells. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we will rely on this function 
so much that everything, everything I'm telling you that can be off is because these guys are not able to do the checklist and tell the body what to do next. Yeah, yeah it, it's, I mean, I, I'm biased, but I think the microbiome is so interesting. And I, I really love that you brought up that it's so complex. I, I think microbiome research right now, it's a little bit of the wild west of research. Everyone's trying to figure stuff out. And the more we dig into it, the more that, I, you know, your purpose of finding a balance, I, I think is so important. Um, so I want to make sure to get some to some of the questions that have been asked on Instagram. Um, you know, your Instagram handle is up right now so that other people can see it. So I definitely definitely suggest people to go follow Dr. Geraldo and ask him a bunch of these questions, especially if, you know, if it don't, if they don't get answered right now. Um, here's an interesting question, uh, from Georgia, Georgia, Georgia and roses, roses, whatever. Uh, <laughs> these handles are difficult. Um, but they, they have a really good question. So they say you get these cleaning solutions that claim to kill 99% of everything, but, also, are kids safe? Um, you know, how, uh, how do these cleaning solutions, are they affecting our body in some way? Um, and why don't we just use it all the time? Like, should I just keep this with me or just take Lysol with me and just rub down my body whenever I think about it? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a great question. Um, so the best way to answer this is using an analogy. If you want, if you have a, a house that you can put 100, 100 people there, and you you have outside 50 guys more than want to get in, even if you want to, it will be not enough room for them to get in. And so our body is fully occupied with microbes. Mm -hmm. They're using their space and they are holding their ground even if they not be the, the best ones uh, or could be not in the, in the best balanced proportions, uh, still they're going to be using their space. And if you wipe them off with antiseptics constantly, you're actually creating an available space for other bacteria or viruses, any type of microbes, to get in. Mm -hmm. Because our bacteria or microbes in general create a natural defense barrier. Mm -hmm. So if we are healthy enough, we were not, of course, overly exposed to pathogens or any other type of toxins, we have this amazing way of protecting ourselves in our skins, internally in our body, and these guys are actually holding the ground to prevent other foreign species to get inside us and create damage. So, but that also re relies on the on the fact that that the same person will have a um, balanced ecosystem, because if we modify the acidity, we modify some conditions internally, that will be more likely for other foreign pathogens to get in and stay there. Mm -hmm. So okay. those are two sides of the story. But I will never recommend the overuse of antiseptics because we know that you get more exposed to opportunistic pathogens when you're wiping off your own protective bacteria that you have already there. Yeah, it, it kind of sounds to me like this isn't really a black and white issue, right? So it's not, I, I feel like on the news right now, we're seeing a lot of kind of fear mongering or people just really sensationalizing. Um, but then we also see a lot of people saying like, well, it's, it's less bad than the flu. And the more experts that I talk to, and, and let me know if this kind of, echoes your perspectives, but it's, it's somewhere in the middle of taking these precautionary measures of when you're out in public to kind of avoid being too close, cover your face and mouth when you cough. Um, when you touch things, make sure to wash your hands before you touch your face again or before you touch a lot of things. Um, but it doesn't mean that you have to be staying in a bubble. Um, I guess I, I'll ask you, and it's something I probably should be asking more of our experts, but what what kind of rules are you following for yourself or, or what things would you suggest to others to kind of strike that happy balance between staying safe and also not getting paranoid? Yeah, that's actually that's one of the main things. I don't get paranoid because if, this, if there's one thing that 
causes a huge disrupt, huge disruption in internally in our body is a stress. You know, so the more stress you get, the more anxiety you get, that actually is going to have a detrimental effect in your health, regardless of yeah, what you're yeah. exposed to. Uh, that's my first recommendation. Actually, take things with um, uh, with using logic and applying like natural rules. We are exposed to so many things every day. We have so many microbes. We have hundred trillions of microbes approximately in our bodies. So if you think you can live in a clean environment, that's impossible. Mm -hmm. But it's it's like <clears throat> the fact that we don't see them is just. It creates this illusion that we're they're actually not there, but they are everywhere. Um, for me, the most important thing is, first of all, of course, uh, not try try to avoid human contact, uh, especially from from people that you're not you don't know uh, where they have been exposed to. And it's not really a complicated rule to follow. I mean, like maybe this is not the time to be hugging, kissing, and shaking hands. Uh, <clears throat> but <clears throat> also, we can we can uh, we can prevent from if we have need to touch or be in contact with people, just washing our hands, having a, a good daily routine of hygiene that is not a, that doesn't necessarily includes like antiseptics. Just mm -hmm. use soap and, and wash yourself the way that you should be doing anyway, and drink water clean water, keep yourself hydrated. Um, I would suggest every time that um, we are facing winter season, uh, usually recommendable to get uh, some external supplement for vitamins, especially C vitamin, D vitamins, A vitamin, are very needed to keep um, functioning our immune system properly. Probiotics, I will not indicate uh, generally probiotics. We, I do analyze. I do DNA or RNA testing for seeing what you need. Uh, I don't give random probiotics. That fermented food for most of the people will work as a very good strategy to bring in, in a daily basis, some bacteria we need to improve our gut function. Could unless, you give us a, a few examples? Sorry, of, no, 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 of, of well, like I, fermented I, foods. I have a reaction. Some people react very badly to to um, to fermented food. That will be the only exception. Oh, okay. Um, and in terms of fermented foods, uh, you know, I, I think of yogurt. I don't know if that counts as, does that count? What what, what kind of fermented foods could, could people be looking at? And I, I love that you're bringing this up because a lot of these questions that we're getting, um, you know, from Matthew again, can you stack the odds in favor of a good microbiome? Um, we've got people asking on Instagram how, how they can kind of rebuild it and a lot of questions about probiotics. And so I think that's really important of not just, uh, a lot of probiotics are like one to five different species. And, and we know that our body is, is full of so many different types of bacteria. And again, that balance is, is so important. Um, but going back to your, your point about fermented foods, what, what kind of things can I be eating? And, and meanwhile, I'm going to be writing down like a grocery list of what I should go out and get. So, um, it's of course, basically everything should be organic, natural sourced, um, all this checklist that we have to do with everything we are eating anyway. Yeah. Uh, sauerkraut is, is a great way of getting, getting bacteria. Uh, kimchi, kombucha also are, are very used now, right now, very popular. We can find it pretty much in every supermarket right now about, um, and they are also providing um, a good source of, of, of naturally occurring bacteria there, and some yeast that might be beneficial as well for us. Um, this is a daily work. This is not something that is going to happen from one day to another, because the amount of damage we bring to the to the ecosystem and the microbiome is pretty extent for most of us. Mm -hmm. So, um, but keeping a routine of of eating fermented food like yogurt, yogurt is is fermented if it's natural. Mm -hmm. But most of the yogurts we are going to find in the commercial brands that are, are available. Are, they're pretty much dead, and they have so many chemicals. So one of the recommendations for any type of fermented food will be read the labels. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have any food additives and anything else than the original food that should be there. Mm -hmm. For jobber, you should be seeing like milk, 
and cultures. Mm -hmm. And it might be maybe flavored naturally with sugar or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't like sugar, of course, but um, <clears throat> it's not something I'm promoting, but that would be all. Like all these gums and jellies they put there yeah. Uh, yeah. to add texture is, of course, not maltodextrin. It's a huge disruptor of the microbiome. And definitely we should not be seeing those ingredients in, in those foods. Mm -hmm. But um, but besides that, any fermented food, if you can handle it, will be a good asset into your diet, mm -hmm. uh, into your daily routine of, of foods that you can get. Yeah, it just sounds like, again, the more people I talk to, it sounds like there's not really a, a magic bullet to being healthy and and maybe this is an opportunity for all of us to reevaluate how we live our lives of uh you know washing our hands of course the social isolation part that's not really what we want to institute um but eating these foods that don't have a lot of pesticides you know cutting down on simple sugars i really love just plain greek yogurt with uh some cut up fruit and some honey uh, maybe some almonds or something like that on top uh, and this is a good reminder to do this. And we've got an interesting question here from Elliot Friedman, uh, just asking you, you know, what your job really entails as far as, uh, I, I believe you have a doctor in naturopathy. Oh, I totally butchered that. Um, yes. And uh, got some questions about the Institute um, that there talks about alternative medicine. I looked up some of these things beforehand, but it was kind of talking about how it's it's maybe more of a holistic approach. So kind of how does your research differ from some of the research that might be being done at uh, maybe the hospitals that a lot of us end up going to? So specifically with speaking about the microbiome balancing, um, I have two main areas that I, I work on. And the first, first and I think it's the most important one, it's regulating, um, again, the environmental conditions in your body. And that's uh, that's an approach that's not being used so much in conjugation with um, with, uh, with the microbiome rebalancing. Mm -hmm. Usually what you see is that most of the people are going to get some type of probiotics and prebiotics, and that's it. And sadly, that doesn't do the job. And something that I would like to, to, to tell to everyone who's listening right now is that don't get freaked out about one bacteria or two bacteria that will show in your common testing for 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 microbiome. In, in any lab you're seeing, you will see some parameters that might be showing that you have this type or, or the other type of bacteria, and they seem to be very, very dangerous, but it's all about balance. We have so many things, and then maybe tomorrow you don't have them, okay. uh, okay. and they're just passing by. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that might stay will stay only because you're creating the conditions in your body to hold them. Mm -hmm. So my the main part of my program is based on the fact that we are exposed to a lot of toxins, that we have a certain degree of inflammation in our gut, and we I, I try to heal that and remove those elements from your, your body before even thinking about putting bacteria back in your body mm -hmm. in some way. And if it's needed, because there's not... To, not everyone needs to get uh, foreign bacteria in, in their bodies. And we, most of us, we have a vast amount of bacteria mm -hmm. to be able to sustain healthy parameters. Mm -hmm. But um, we need to know how to balance them and create the environment, the environment they need in order to be in the right amounts, in the right diversity. Right, right. I mean, I think I could probably chat with you. I don't know. We'll probably hop off and then I'm going to ask you about 500 more questions. Um, and, and definitely other people should go and ask you questions. I think this is just fascinating in, in so many ways. And even when things start settling down with COVID-19, uh, yeah. I think that this is bringing up so many questions that I, I think our audience is really excited about and really interested in. Um, you know, microbiome stuff is so ongoing and, and there's not really one agreed on way to do these things. And it's, it's really interesting to hear your perspective. I like to end up these sort of discussions with one question for all the experts, which is, what are you Googling right now? What are you searching online for? What are you asking colleagues about COVID? You know, what do you want to see covered in the news? Um, I, to be honest, I'm, 
trying to get information to a certain extent that doesn't also overwhelm me because mm -hmm. I take care of myself as well. And sometimes too much information is not healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to approach, of course, the more scientific uh, sites that you can get um, the information that has been analyzed more objectively. Uh, I don't think that getting paranoid or scared and is is reasonable right now. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a SARS virus. It's, it's, it's a respiratory virus. Uh, has less mortality rate regarding case-based mortality than the previous SARS virus that we we had before. Uh, and but it's it's more likely to be undetected. Yeah. So yeah. what I'm trying to see is actually now see a little bit the numbers. How is what's going on with the U.S. population in terms of, um, of rates of contagious and what are the measuring measures that the government's taking for and the guidelines we're receiving to counteract this? But uh, we also, I also have my personal approach of how to deal with this. So it's, um, I'm trying to get whatever I think useful for that is being provided by the media, but also I have my very own personal approach in this. Uh, situation, and that's also something I rely on. Fantastic. Well, thank you again so much for doing this. I learned a lot, um, and I really, that perspective at the end there is, I think it's so important, and I love that you brought up, you know, this is not just about balancing the microbiome. It's about balancing your overall health. It's about taking care of yourself in terms of, yes, washing your hands, but also get some exercise, get some sleep, do some breathing, because there's a difference between preparation and panic. Um, so would love to wrap up here. Uh, looks like, so we've got our Instagram handle, Dr. Geraldo. Uh, anywhere else that people should be going to find information? Are you open to people asking you questions? Oh, definitely. Okay. Uh, I love to have a, a communication with people who are interested in this. This is, this is for me, is my, my passion. And definitely I, I would love to expand it to everyone who's interested. Excellent. Well, thank you again. Um, and you take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, and I will talk to you very soon. Thank you very much. Thanks for the invitation and for everyone who is listening. Yes. That's it for today. Um, thank you all for coming. The questions are amazing. As per usual, like, subscribe. That tells me that we should keep going with this stuff. Even after the COVID thing it is quieted down a little bit. Like, that goes into, let me know what you want to hear about. If you're an expert who wants to talk about your cool shit, let me know. Uh, you can do that, let's see, uh, there, uh, by following me on Instagram and Twitter. Send me a message and I would love to talk to you. Uh, until then, go take care of yourself, drink some water, uh, do the things. <laughs>